Father, husband, veteran, race car legend. These are just a few words to describe the life that was Sergio Hernandez. Born in Cuba, Sergio Hernandez migrated to the United States at an early age. There he acclimated to the American culture, embracing competition. Dad loved to race. And even if he wasn't the best, he always had fun. Joe was a very easygoing uh, guy to work. And from my, uh, from my half-sister would tell me is that when you showed up at Joe's place, you worked. It meant more to him than probably a lot of stuff. He just loved to race. Soon, Sergio was drafted into the U.S. Army, eventually fighting in the Korean War. Yeah, he did fight in the Korean War. Uh, he didn't really talk about that, so uh, he kept that pretty much to himself. But it was kind of interesting. To me, he did mention a, a couple of things that happened, uh, and which he never even talked to his, uh, his people at work. When we were at Sunshine Speedway in St. Petersburg, Dad and my brother and I were walking back to the car, and Dad said, want to race to the car? And we thought, sure, okay, we'll beat you easily. And when we all ran, Dad beat us to a pulp. And that's when he told us a story about when he was in the Korean War, there was um, a valley that they were in the bottom of. And they had to go from one end of the valley to the other end to be able to get back to the helicopters that were going to rescue them. He personally entered as a quiet type, uh, kind of conveyed it to himself, but he did not, he did not brag or even talk about his involvement in the Korean War. Upon his return to the United States, Sergio discovered a passion for something new, racing. Before that, well, he came out of the army in 53, 54. And he had the, it was called the uh, stock car. And he raced there at Phillip Field there in Tampa, Florida. And uh, it wasn't a very good car, but he'd always take the first positions. And uh, I think he had a, he, he held back the crowd. Um, he raced go-karts with my mom. They won a lot of championships. They had a business in our backyard in the garage. And they also had a shop over on Hillsborough Avenue that was a lot of fun to go and, and work at. I would say 1959. It wasn't go-karts. It was actually called Track Rabbits. And I won fifth place national championship. My mom and him won a championship with points, and they won a trip to the Bahamas. With Joe, uh, then he started his own, what it's called, he sold cool carts back in about 1963. While his family grew, Sergio's love for racing evolved with stock cars and ultimately sprint cars. My dad used to race at Phillips Field, the old fairgrounds that was at the University of Tampa. When dad started racing the go-karts, he raced over at Phillips Field in Tampa and Plant Field. When he ended up getting the three-quarter midget, he would expand his driving to like Golden Gate Speedway, Sunshine Skyway, um, East Bay, and Tampa State Fairgrounds. Then in 1956, he had what was called the Smoke and Pipe uh, number 36. Now, old 36 was a good car. Whether they stroked it up or maybe ran nitro with the gasoline, who knows? Controversy struck when Sergio began winning races under the name of Joe Herndon. Joe Herndon was a name, a fictitious name, that he used when he raced because when he was racing, he lived at home with his mom and he didn't want his mother to find out that he was winning races. She ended up finding out because they put a picture of him winning a race and it was under the name Joe Herndon. But he also worked at a body shop that Joe Herndon owned. He was the foreman there. I always knew him as... Joe or Sergio Hernandez. And uh, that's all I ever knew from the time uh, I think they met in 1954. My mother and Joe uh, met then. And I never knew, if, as far as his first name went, I never knew uh, any other name than Joe. It was just one of those things that it was picked out of there and Joe Herndon said, go ahead and use, just use my name. You work for me, so nobody will know the difference. It was always, to me, referred to as Joe or Sergio as his first name. An unlikely meeting in 1950 with Sprint Car Hall of Famer Frank Riddle 
would turn into one of Sergio's longest racing relationships. The go-kart track in Phillips Field is where Dad met Frank Riddle, and it was one of the longest relationships he had with any other driver in the series of the local Tampa drivers. Frank Riddle drove the number 11 car that my dad owned and sponsored fully at uh, the Sprint Car uh, Series for, I don't know, quite a few years, a long time. And then when he was co-owner of the winged asphalt car, he, which he had co-owned with Frank Riddle, they ran the Little 500 in Anderson, Indiana. And then he won with the asphalt car that Frank Riddle drove. They won a lot of championships in the Tampa Bay area. And then they would go up to Little Rock, to Little Anderson, Indiana, and race up there where they won two championships in a row with the asphalt car. Dad ended up being co-owner with Frank Riddle when Dad decided to no longer drive. And he bought the two cars, the asphalt and the uh, dirt car. He asked the two best drivers in the area to be his driver, Stan Butler for the uh, dirt car and Frank Riddle for the asphalt car. And Frank said, yes, on one condition, we be co-owners. And at that point, they both were the owners of the Superior Automotive of Tampa asphalt car. And Frank primarily drove the distant races like the Little 500 at Anderson, Indiana. Sergio's love for sprint car racing also included dirt tracks and Stan Butler was the man to drive the number 11 car. Dad and Stan Butler were perfect pairings for the dirt car. Stan was a very good driver and he knew that there were a lot of risk when you drove in dirt and that's why the, that's, the dirt cars are at times thought of as the most dangerous because of the openness of the draw of the car. And when you go down the back chute, those cars go from 30 to 100. No matter what time of day or night that they had a race somewhere, we would always go back to the, to the shop in Drew Park, take the car out of the trailer, and made sure it was spotless clean before it went back in the trailer. He ran against the likes of Steve Kinzer, the um, Swindell brothers, and it was always a contingency from Tampa, the, the Rudiments, Stan Butler, uh, Frank Riddle, uh, Roland Johnson, Pancho Alvarez, Sammy Rodriguez. They would go up to the Midwest and run as the Tampa contingency. And everybody was so nice to everybody, up to the Tampa drivers, whenever they showed up at one of the Midwest races, that that's why dad loved running up in the world of outlaws. Sergio passed away in 1993 at the age of 63. While short-lived, he left a legacy that would impact the sprint car community for generations. Dad loved racing. He loved being behind the wheel, but he was most successful as a car owner and a car sponsor. Because his love for cars were, were always there, uh, just like it was from the beginning, probably in the 50s. He started racing, I think, before I was even born and continued racing up until, oh, I don't know. He had sprint cars when he got rid of his business when he was 63 years old. There have been many who have entered the racing world, but none had the racer's spirit like Sergio Hernandez.